Hey folks, welcome back to another video. Today it's about tips and tricks around Bitwig Studio version 5. And it's probably not going to be the last video about tips and tricks. So if you want to see certain things mentioned in the series, then please let me know in the comments below. So you can use the new segments multi-stage envelope generator as a sidechain modulator and duck the bass to kick drum, for instance. Here we have a bass track, right? And a kick drum track, and it sounds like this at the moment. And we want to duck the bass away every time the kick drum plays. So we go here to the bass track. We go to the uh, modulator panel of the, of the track, right? Expanded here. And we add one segments uh, modulator. And when we hit play now, you can see this envelope is only triggered when the bass tra or when the bass sound is triggered here with this note, right? So every time you trigger this note, um, the segments envelope is triggered. So that's not what we want. We want to trigger this every time the kick drum plays. So we click here on the track panel itself and go to the left side in the inspector. And here we have multiple tabs. It's a bit hidden, right? So we have here this um, show device chain, show remote controls, and then we have here uh, modulation, show modulation mappings by source. So that's what we need. And in here we have track modulators node source. So here we can change where this segments envelope gets its triggers from. So we want to have the triggers coming from the kick. So we select here kick output, right? And now when we play, you can see every time the kick drum plays here, we re-trigger this envelope. Nice. So what, what we want to do now is we want to switch this here to one shot. That's what we need. And we select here maybe eight notes. This means from zero to one um, is exactly one eight note. So we can perfectly time our shape. So we delete this here, delete that. But this is exactly one eight note. And then we can move this over here, right? And then modulate here, of course, something on the track, the volume of the bass. And it's perfectly timed. You can even go faster if you have drum bass or something like this, then 16 note, Right, so this is one sixteen note here, basically from zero to one, and you can perfectly time this. Maybe bring in your point in the middle, do it like this. You have a nice round shape here. I'll try it out a bit slower. Right, so you can use the segments um, modulator um, with sidechain input, and it works also with other modulators. Um, so you have to remember that you can go into the track panel here, the track modulator panel, and then go to the left side um, into the inspector, choose here the third tab and select uh, a different node source for the modulators in here. Okay, pretty easy and nice. We also can go a step further with this. So here we have a kick drum track, we have pads, we have bass, and we probably want to duck the bass and the pads at the same time. So instead of going to the track panel here, we go to the project panel and use segments there. Uh, load up here our curve. I have something prepared here. That's my own curve. So we have this here, go to one shot mode and maybe switch this here to eight notes. And then we can duck here the bass all the way. And we can go here to the pads and select basically the output here of this pads synthesizer. And maybe not pull the full scale, just your halfway, something like this. And we have to choose, of course, here the input to the kick drum. So now we duck the bass and the pads to the kick drum with the same modulator. And we don't need to set this up now on every track. We just can grab here basically this global modulator out and modulate whatever we want to modulate. And when we change the shape here to something different, 
cause the kick jump changes, um, then everything else changes with it. So it's a global modulator that's used for ducking. Very handy. So let's imagine you want to fade in multiple of these tracks here at different speeds. So at the moment we have here, uh, we have this global macro mapped to all these uh, volume faders here. We can fade these in, but it's all pretty linear, right? So all fade in at the same speed. So what we can do is we can misuse the curves uh, modulator here, which is an LFO as a transfer curve. So what we can do is we can open up here the LFO and we can basically delete everything that's in here and then point in one and the other, something like this. Maybe use unipolar instead of bipolar. And then we have here a curve, right? So we can make use of that. So we switch this here to hold, so it stays basically in place. And we use then here, instead of mapping this directly to all these faders, we remove the mapping here, double click, and then we map this here to the face uh, value. So I think we need here 350 or 360 degrees probably a bit less, um, three, five, nine, something like this. We stay here at the end, right? So now you can see we move basically from the beginning up to the end. And now we can use the output of this curves module as a modulation source for these faders. So we need here to duplicate this. I just hold control to duplicate this basically. Do this here for the second one. And also the third one. And maybe we want to close this down here. The fourth one, it's one. Fifth one. And we draw then basically for every track or for every curve, we use a different curve. curve. So we can transfer basically the value in different ways to the target. Okay. So here in the first one, we start basically uh, like this. And here we use a different curve, something like this. You can even click on here on the first note and see on the left side which kind of value you have for the curvature. So you can also type in your values and then yeah, iterate here through all these um, curve modules and get the, the right number. So I do it like this, just, just as, as an example here. Let's do this one completely in the opposite way. So now when we open up here this value, we can see each of these faders come in at a different speed. But if you are at 100%, all these sliders are also at 100%. So the, the target value is always the same at 100%, but how, how fast they move there and in which manner you can influence with these transfer curves, basically. Okay, so you can my, make nice little different fade ins for different target, targets while using the same source um, macro. So this is not only handy for mixing purposes here, you can also make probably use of this um, with sound design and different presets, for instance, right? So I want to show you basically how you can misuse these curves, LFOs as transfer curves. In Bitwig 5, we have a new modifier key for modulation mappings. So when we map here basically velocity to the cutoff like this, the problem is now that we can't change the cutoff because we are in mapping mode, right? Before Bitwig 5, we had to go out of the mapping mode with escape, change the cutoff to our liking, and then go back into the mapping mode and then change the modulation amount, right? So now we have the Alt key. So we just hold Alt and then we are quickly out of the mapping mode. And when we release Alt, we are back in the mapping mode. 
So just hold Alt, change the cutoff, release, and change the modulation amount. So it's pretty easy to tweak the modulation amount and the knob parameter itself, which is really nice to have. So in this example here, I have some kind of dubstep tune at 100 BPM. And here I have a global modulator, uh, a curves modulator, and I'm modulating the BPM by 20, which means when the curve is up here, we are at 120 BPM, and here we are down at 80 BPM, so minus 20. So this kind of curve now creates some kind of wonky groove, which is maybe interesting to you. So it slows down and then it speeds up. And then you can play around here with all these different settings in the curve editor to create some kind of grooves that you like. Maybe uh, modulating by 20 is a bit too much. Uh, so you can also dial this down here with the amount, right? Uh, but sometimes this can be interesting uh, because the LFO itself is synchronized to the BBM. And uh, you change the BBM with the LFO. So it's kind of a feedback loop. So keep that in mind, but nonetheless, it's pretty interesting. So you can also go crazy here with the, uh, with the editor, right? So you can say, I want to have 80 BPM here, and then I want to have uh, 120 BPM here. So it's, it can be interesting. Uh, so certain settings are a bit too much. Or you speed up the tempo here. Which is a bit better. It creates some kind of shuffled beat. Um, <clears throat> so this is pretty interesting to use here. A curve modulator to modulate the BPM. It's kind of a groove pool. But not really. At last, I want to give you some tips for the browser, but some of these features don't work at the moment. They are in beta, um, yeah, bugged beta state, basically, um, but they worked before. But I want to give you here this example. So when you're inserting here an instrument and you don't like how the browser looks like, uh, then you can change it to your liking. For instance, I want to have here the everything category selected all the time and I want to have this deselected here um, and then when you made your change you can right click and say remember selected filters when adding to empty instrument track so you click that and then the browser should remember the state and every time you insert an instrument um, the browser looks exactly like this and you can do this for or you can do this in different places it's um, in here for instruments uh, when you have an instrument inserted already, then here it's for audio effects, right? You can right click and say, remember selected filters when inserting audio effects. And it's, I think, in front also here for note uh, devices, for note FX. Uh, right click, remember selected filters when inserting uh, note FX. So you can do this in all kinds of different places. The problem now is that it doesn't work right now. Uh, it's bugged, but it will be fixed probably uh, within the beta before the um, yeah big release or the final release uh, or the final version of Bitwig comes out. Um, then we have something like uh, collections and a lot of people used collections before, but I think if you haven't used collections before now, it's easier than ever. So you click on something and you can see collections right here. You have your main collection here, which is called favorites. You can add the eHead device here to your favorite list. And then you can recall the favorite list on top here, right? And you can see eHead device is now in here. Um, so you can use that or you can add it here to a different collection. Here I have most used, for instance. So when I use eHead, all the time I'm adding this here to my most used uh, collection and can recall it then. 
or you can create a new collection. I think you can also add your multiple devices. Just hold shift and say, um, this is a new collection, favorite uh, drum devices, and then give it a color. Hit OK and boom. And you also have it here on the left side in the yeah, quick bar, quick icon bar, where you can select then this and see all your devices. But you can see here at the moment it's 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 bugged for some reason. Um so this is a problem there. You can also track this out, I think, or delete this. Um I think you have to go over here, right? So on these four squares, you can see then collections and you can drag in certain things here to the left side if you want to, or drag it out. And um, yeah, design basically your left uh, bar, your main icon bar here with your custom collections. If you don't like, or if you want to have quick searches, or if you want to collect certain devices or presets into one collection, this is pretty handy to do. And it's also pretty handy to add presets and devices to these collections with these buttons here on the right side. I just want to give you um, this tip that you can use that and maybe give it a try. Okay, I think that's it for this video. So uh, please keep in mind, Bitwig Studio is still in beta, so uh, a lot of things will change probably. Um, maybe some tips and tricks will be obsolete in the future. So just as a disclaimer. Also, if you want to see certain things mentioned in the series, then please let me know in the comments. Uh, will be added in the next video. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, please like and subscribe and I see you in the next one. Bye.